The CMM Master is powered by Verisurf Automate, a graphical object-oriented programming language that works inside Verisurf's 3D CAD environment. The intuitive interface allows even novice users to program part inspections. I'll start by loading a model of the part that we want to inspect, then I'll hide the device and zoom in for a better view. For this example, I'll create a simple inspection plan to measure and analyze the hole pattern, the slot, the sphere, and the cone, and I'll measure the edge lines to check parallelism and perpendicularity. I'll also inspect surface profile on the front of the part. It's a simple plan, but it demonstrates many of the features of model-based programming. To begin, I'll select the Automate tab and create a new plan. Next, I'll add circles for the hole pattern, the large ID hole, and the boss by selecting the features in the model that define their nominal values. We can see these values in the grid view as we highlight each circle. I'll continue by adding the slot, the sphere, and the cone using the same method. Finally, I'll add the three lines on the top edges. Once the features have been added to the plan, we generate a drive path for them. I'll highlight circles 1 through 8 and choose Generate Path. In the Generate Path dialog, I'll then configure the path to measure eight points on the inside of the holes at a depth of a tenth of an inch. On the CMM Settings tab, I'll use the top WCS to control the entry and exit vectors and set their distance to a half inch. The WCS is a powerful programming tool that allows us to align the entry and exit vectors to a reference plane if necessary. Using the WCS control, we can orient these vectors to any of the standard or even custom WCS views, regardless of the feature vector. Notice that I can adjust values such as entry and exit vectors, approach and retract distances, and many other settings simply by scrolling the mouse wheel, and the effect on the path is visible in real time. This works for all of the scroll controls. I'll complete the path for the small holes by enabling scanning at a spacing of 80 thousandths of an inch. We can scan any feature on the part simply by choosing Enable Scanning. When I generate the path for the large hole, I'll increase the number of points to 10 using the same depth as the small holes. On the CMM Settings tab, I'll set the clearance vector to top and adjust the entry and exit distances. To measure the boss, I'll move the path to the outside of the circle and then reduce the number of measured points to four. Notice that the path nearly intersects the surface. I'll compensate by adding a clearance point between each measurement. I'll also set the approach and retract distances to 150 thousandths and adjust the entry and exit vectors. Next, I'll configure the slot to measure five points at a depth of a tenth of an inch, and then adjust the entry and exit vectors. For the sphere, I'll use 20 points on the inside spread over three rows, and I'll reduce the coverage to 90% to avoid measuring too close to the rim. I'll also adjust the entry and exit vectors and enable scanning. For the cone, I'll configure the path to measure 10 points on each of three rows with 150 thousandths separation. I'll then adjust the entry exit as I did for the sphere and enable scanning. Finally, I'll create paths for the three lines. I'll start by moving the ends in a half inch from the tangent points and clamps and then lower the depth. I'll also adjust the clearance vectors to avoid the fixture clamps, and then enable scanning. To inspect surface profile, I'll add a surface grid to the plan. In the Generate Path dialog, I'll select the front surface and then use the UV control to create a 16 by 2 grid. 
The shift, offset, and rotation controls allow us to conform the grid to virtually any surface. We can see in real time how the changes to these values affect the path. Finally, I'll enable scanning for the profile measurement using a half-inch spacing. When we run the plan, Verisurf will measure and report surface deviation at each point in the grid. The plan is now essentially complete, so we can run the simulator and observe the path. The simulation controls allow us to start, stop, and vary the playback speed. We can also highlight a single feature and simply drag the slider for greater control. Features can be positioned anywhere in a plan using drag and drop or cut and paste. Notice that I can improve the efficiency simply by moving the lines to the top, followed by the sphere and the cone. I'll do this by highlighting and then dragging the groups of features. The purpose of the inspection is to report results, so I'll complete the plan by adding callouts to report parallelism and perpendicularity between the lines. I'll highlight lines 1 and 2 and choose perpendicularity, and then do the same for lines 2 and 3. I'll then highlight lines 1 and 3 and choose parallelism. I'll also construct a circle through the whole pattern. I'll highlight circles 1 through 8 and then choose Construct Circle. In the Details pane, I can use the checkboxes to select the maximum angle and spacing for the report. I'll use the Report button on the toolbar to open the plan in the Report Manager, where we can see the features and calculations with various properties selected for reporting. Next, I'll clear the report and then select the PDF format for file output. Before saving the file, notice that I can restrict access to Automate and the Report Manager to prevent accidental or intentional modification of the inspection plan. The plan is now ready to run. In the following steps, we'll align the device and then inspect the part.